Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. We are studying an introduction to statistical quality control. Quality improvement in the modern business environment. In this video we will discuss in details about the quality engineering terminology. Before starting, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, just click on subscribe and press the bell icon. Here, we come up with new videos on different subjects to make the academic studies easier for you. So, into the topic. Every product possesses a number of elements that jointly describe what the user or consumer thinks of as quality. These parameters are often called quality characteristics. Sometimes these are called critical to quality, CTQ, characteristics. Quality characteristics may be of several types. Number 1. Physical characteristics, like length, weight, voltage, viscosity. Number 2. Sensory characteristics, like taste, appearance, color. Number 3. Time orientation characteristics, like reliability, durability, serviceability. Note that the different types of quality characteristics can relate directly or indirectly to the dimensions or aspects of quality discussed in the previous section. Quality engineering is the set of operational, managerial, and engineering activities that a company uses to ensure that the quality characteristics of a product are at the nominal or required levels and that the variability around these desired levels is minimum. The techniques discussed inform much of the basic methodology used by engineers and other technical professionals to achieve these goals. Most organizations find it difficult and expensive to provide the customer with products that have quality characteristics that are always identical from unit to unit or are at levels that match customer expectations. A major reason for this is variability. There is a certain amount of variability in every product, consequently, no two products are ever identical. For example, the thickness of the blades on a jet turbine engine impeller is not identical even on the same impeller. Blade thickness will also differ between impellers. If this variation in blade thickness is small, then it may have no impact on the customer. However, if the variation is large, then the customer may perceive the unit to be undesirable and unacceptable. Sources of this variability include differences in materials, differences in the performance and operation of the manufacturing equipment, and differences in the way the operators perform their tasks. This line of thinking led to the previous definition of quality improvement. Since variability can only be described in statistical terms, statistical methods play a central role in quality improvement efforts. In the application of statistical methods to quality engineering, it is fairly typical to classify data on quality characteristics as either attributes or variables data. Variables data are usually continuous measurements, such as length, voltage, or viscosity. Attributes data, on the other hand, are usually discrete data, often taking the form of counts, such as the number of loan applications that could not be properly processed because of missing required information, or the number of emergency room arrivals that have to wait more than 30 minutes to receive medical attention. We will describe statistical-based quality engineering tools for dealing with both types of data. Quality characteristics are often evaluated relative to specifications. For a manufactured product, the specifications are the desired measurements for the quality characteristics of the components and sub-assemblies that make up the product, as well as the desired values for the quality characteristics in the final product. For example, the diameter of a shaft used in an automobile transmission cannot be too large or it will not fit into the mating bearing, nor can it be too small, resulting in a loose fit, causing vibration, wear, and early failure of the assembly. In the service industries, specifications are typically expressed in terms of the maximum amount of time to process an order or to provide a particular service. A value of measurement that corresponds to the desired value for that quality characteristic is called the nominal or target value for that characteristic. These target values are usually bounded by a range of values that, most typically, we believe will be sufficiently close to the target so as to not impact the function or performance of the product if the quality characteristic is in that range. The largest allowable value for a quality characteristic is called the upper specification limit, USL, and the smallest allowable value for a quality characteristic is called the lower specification limit, LSL. 
some quality characteristics have specification limits on only one side of the target. For example, the compressive strength of a component used in an automobile bumper likely has a target value and a lower specification limit, but not an upper specification limit. Specifications are usually the result of the engineering design process for the product. Traditionally, design engineers have arrived at a product design configuration through the use of engineering science principles, which often results in the designer specifying the target values for the critical design parameters. Then prototype construction and testing follow. This testing is often done in a very unstructured manner, without the use of statistically based experimental design procedures, and without much interaction with or knowledge of the manufacturing processes that must produce the component parts and final product. However, through this general procedure, the specification limits are usually determined by the design engineer. Then the final product is released to manufacturing. We refer to this as the over-the-wall approach to design. Problems in product quality usually are greater when the over-the-wall approach to design is used. In this approach, specifications are often set without regard to the inherent variability that exists in materials, processes, and other parts of the system, which results in components or products that are non-conforming, that is, non-conforming products are those that fail to meet one or more of their specifications. A specific type of failure is called a non-conformity. A non-conforming product is not necessarily unfit for use, for example, a detergent may have a concentration of active ingredients that is below the lower specification limit, but it may still perform acceptably if the customer uses a greater amount of the product. A non-conforming product is considered defective if it has one or more defects, which are non-conformities that are serious enough to significantly affect the safe or effective use of the product. Obviously, Failure on the part of a company to improve its manufacturing processes can also cause non-conformities and defects. The over-the-wall design process has been the subject of much attention in the past 25 years. CAD, CAM systems have done much to automate the design process and to more effectively translate specifications into manufacturing activities and processes. Design for manufacturability and assembly has emerged as an important part of overcoming the inherent problems with the over-the-wall approach to design, and most engineers receive some background on those areas today as part of their formal education. The recent emphasis on concurrent engineering has stressed a team approach to design, with specialists in manufacturing, quality engineering, and other disciplines working together with the product designer at the earliest stages of the product design process. Furthermore, the effective use of the quality improvement methodology at all levels of the process used in technology commercialization and product realization, including product design, development, manufacturing, distribution, and customer support, plays a crucial role in quality improvement. So, we have discussed in details about the quality engineering terminologies. Thank you.